Hello guys, I am Nikhil from Dream Game Studios and to talk about Dream Game Studios, Dream Game Studios is the one of the exciting and newest gaming company out of India and we are building a most advanced and biggest AAA mobile game to ever come out of India. Uh, so today, so today I am here to talk about how did we transition from other game engines to Unreal Engine and why did we choose Unreal Engine. Right, uh, before I start, I'll give a brief background about myself. Okay, uh, so I've worked as a key gameplay programmer and lead for almost 11 plus game title, which are downloaded by uh, and played by millions of users around the world. And along with that, I have also worked with multiple sports franchises to bring gameplay experiences uh, in sports industry. Right, so this is going to be our agenda for today. Uh, We'll be talking about our experience with different game engines that we have worked on. Then, how did we transition to Unreal Engine? And there's going to be a lot of programming talks over here. And lastly, we'll be also talking about physics in sports games and opportunities in Unreal Engine in India and world. Before I start, I want to ask a question. How many of you guys have used Unity Game Engine? Okay. I think this is one of the best talk that you will get, you know, to switch to Unreal Engine from Unity Engine or any other engine. Right. Uh, so Dream Game Studios is a gaming studio of Dream Sports. And as I said, we are building a biggest AAA mobile game. And we are expecting a reach of about 140 million users on the launch date. So Dream Sports is India's top profitable unicorns with a valuation of $8 billion. And with a brand ranging from Dream 11, Fancode, Dream Capital, Dream Set Go, Dream Sports Foundation. Right. Anyone knows Rollicle Games over here? No, right? Okay. So we were Rollicle Games at start, and we got acquired by Dream Sports, and that is how we got rebranded to Dream Game Studios. So Rollicle was one of the pioneers in mid-core and VR games in India, and we were creators of international uh, award-winning games, to name a few. Uh, we won the Game of the Year award in NASCOM GDC, which is now IGDC. In 2015, we won People's Choice Award for our sports game Flick Tennis uh, at Barcelona. Then we won a Silver Edison Award for our tech Roller Motion. So Roller Motion is a tech via which you can convert a phone into V style gaming. And then we were finalist at South by Southwest for Interactive Innovation Award uh, for Mixed Reality. And along with that, uh, fans at Australian Open and French Open, which is one of the biggest tennis tournament around the world, enjoy our tennis VR experience, which is showcased every year outside the center court. So that's our history and the games we built. So these are some of the logos of the games. Most of the games are sports games. Uh, and some of them, uh, one of them was a zombie game, which is Dead Among Us. Right, let's have some nerd talk now. How many programmers in-house? Right. How many game designers? Right. Awesome. Right. So these are the game engines that we worked in the past. Uh, to start with, we have Roller Engine. Roller Engine is our own proprietary 3D engine for racket sports, built using C++, OpenGL, and uh, Objective-C. Uh, it contains scripts right from importing 3D, 3D geometry and transform from animation bones or joints along with custom physics and it also supported multiplayer. Later we realized that we need a generic system so that we can ship our game faster. And back in 2013, I think we switched to Unity, right? And we have worked a lot in Unity. Then we have also worked on other engines like Cocos 2D and Recently, we have been working in, we have worked on Babylon.js, which is a WebGL engine. Right, so as I mentioned, majority of our games were built using Unity 3D, and we have worked around on Unity over a decade now. We have built games for multiple platforms, right from VR and AR. Our artist and our tech art team has also cracked a lot of optimization challenges in the past. Uh, one of them, if I want to name, is, uh, you know, getting a real, uh, a real life stadium, right, as an AutoCAD file, and putting putting it inside a game with a crowd of about 
20 to 30k, which is a 3D crowd. So that is one of our accomplishment, and that is the one that is featured at French Open every year. I'll showcase in one of the slides later on while I talk about physics. Right. Why did we choose Unreal Engine? Right. Last few years, if you'll see, most of the top-notch games, multiplayer games, are built using Unreal Engine. And all of them are AAA quality graphics games, right? And which align with our requirement. Along with that, our experience with Rolo Engine, we also wanted a flexibility in which we can modify the game engine as per our requirement. And that is when we switched to Unreal Engine in June 2021. Right, so how did we approach this? Okay. Uh, so the way it used to work is our brain used to map the other engine components to Unreal Engine at every time, right? So we took around approximately two weeks to get trained on Unreal Editor, and we got a good help from Unreal team also for that. Uh, and after that, so what are the questions that we asked to the editor? So if, if there's any engine that you want to approach, right? The questions that you ask is where is the content browser? Where is your world, right? How do I import my 3D models? How do I import my 3D animations? Where is the physics? How do I apply collisions, right? So these are all the questions that we asked to the editor and we got answers. And later on, we challenged ourselves with two week mini projects, a small mini projects and all, and we were ready to move on pre-production state in just one month. Right, so we deployed our mini projects on you know, test devices, our mobile devices, and the results and the renders that we got out of it were promising, and it came with very less efforts compared to other engines. So one of the content that helped us from the Epic's Learn tab was content sample project. For example, uh, we went into some problems like I wanted to see how does a root motion work along with collision. Right, so Epic Content Sample has perfect examples to get you through. Uh, along with that, let's say I want to retarget my animations from one body part which is of different size to other body part of different size, right? So if I want to touch over here, right? Uh, if I want to touch over here, my, my length of my finger, is well, length of my hand is going to be less for some body part, while for other body part it might be bigger, right? So if, you, if I, we wanted to approach that and Again, content sample project from Unreal's Learn tab helped us a lot. Okay, you'll never find this in any of the forums, ever. Okay, we tried to do, we, we searched a lot of forums. Okay, how, how, what is this in Unity? What is this in Unreal? Okay, so this is something that we came out with our understanding of previous development in Unity. As I said, right, we have worked around seven plus year in Unity, right? So what is game, object, and mono behavior is your actor, pawn, character, actor component, and scene component. Why do I say that? Because you have a game object as an actor, and you add a behavior to it, which is your actor component. It's just an analogy, right? Then you have a scene file in Unity, you have maps in Unreal. You have update and fixed update, you have tick and sub-stepping. We'll go into sub-stepping when I discuss physics more. We have rigid body and colliders. You have simulate physics and collision. You have, in terms of lighting, it's almost similar. Uh, you have static mixed real time. You have static stationary movable. And you have animation state machine with an SMB which you can attach as a script. You have anim instance blueprint over here. I would not say that these two are same. Coroutine is something that you can add your procedures after a delay or something. Similarly, you have word timer manager at Unreal Engine. So this is uh, some brief uh, mapping of Unity 3D to Unreal Engine. Right, so we had worked, so we had to switch our entire team from C Sharp to C++. Of course, it was not that difficult because we had already worked on C++ while we were working on Roller Engine and Coco Study. So our team was not accustomed to C Sharp. Uh, we, so our team was accustomed to C Sharp using Unity 3D, and we used to write stuff inside update, fixed update to bring objects to life. We always had garbage collection at our disposal. There was no pointer or any stuff. 
uh, so our team was very much excited to learn this new thing called visual scripting, right, uh, which Unreal provides. Uh, so that is, that is when we got introduced to blueprints. So when we were developing our mini projects, right, so blueprint helps us to prototype faster with its node-based uh, interface, which helped us to create the gameplay elements, right? And we got to know that even Unreal Engine does a garbage collection if you derive that your classes from U object, right? So that made our life simple, right? As Arvind had mentioned, right? Whenever you are approaching any new stuff, right? You want to go, you want to look for a project open source first, right? So we, as a core game programmers in our team, we are all nerds over here, right? We wanted to still approach our project using C++, okay? So the shooter game from Unreal Tab was a very good sample that allowed us and exposed us to this framework called as gameplay framework. We were exposed to gameplay framework, but were never exposed to gameplay framework or game modes using C++. So this helped us a lot from our learn tab. Uh, you will find it again in the Epix Learn tab. Right, so a question arises to us. What is the percentage of C++ and blueprints that we should use? Should we code in, should we approach our project using blueprints completely or C++? So there's no definite answer to it. It is according to your requirement. If you'll go around forums, you'll always find that blueprints are little costly you can convert them into, you can nativize them into C++, it will reduce your cost by 10x and all. Uh, but I would say that it is according to your requirement, uh, the development time you want, when you want to ship your game and all. Your game can completely work using blueprints and it's, you get a better hold if you write your uh, game using C++. So this is the sample architecture that we created over here uh, after our mini project, one month mini project. What we did is we used the combination of C++ and Blueprint, both of them. What we did is we built our actor, actor components, our anime instance, our characters, subsystems, and all using C++. We exposed them to Blueprints. And now it's your call, whether you want to use your game flow, you want to write your game flow via C++ or Blueprint. Uh, so every game flow will start with start a game until the end of the game, right? And all of this game flow you can write inside the gameplay framework, right? Now next I'll talk about more about gameplay framework because I feel that if you crack gameplay framework, then you are going to build a most efficient uh, project, Unreal Engine project, right? So as I said, gameplay framework is the most uh, provides the robust. Uh, classes for building your game. Uh, it could be any kind of a game, a shooter game, a RPG game, a sports game, or it could be any kind of simulator game also. Uh, right. So it, it is flexible and it does a lot of heavy lifting for you. And it is so deeply integrated with the engine that my recommendation is to stick to this framework and don't invent any other framework out of it, which you could, you might have to do in case of Unity, right? You might have to use a third party framework or you might have to write your own framework, et cetera. Uh, yeah, th that's what game framework is, gameplay framework is. So it is the most critical uh, part to have a successful and efficient game project. Right, so gameplay framework allows you to ha uh, define your game rules, input, Game camera, user interface. Uh, so Unreal Engine ecosystem introduced us to actor spawn characters, which was a game object in case of Unity 3D. Uh, right. So this Venn diagram. As I mentioned, gameplay framework is most critical. We had to almost refactor our gameplay uh, code multiple times to get this right. But this Venn diagram will help you understand exactly how this gameplay framework works, right? So you have a game mode where you define a set of rules. Let's take, for example, you're making a football game, right? So what is this football game? Football game has uh, is played between two teams with X number of players, 
for y minutes. And it has two halves of y by two, y by two, right? So those are the variables that you expose inside your game mode. You write, write your rules inside the game mode, which can be accessed by the other classes or the object. Then you have game state. For example, you want to maintain, okay, this is a half time, okay, and that is something that you will write inside game state. You have player state. You guys might have played a lot of battle royale games, right? And you play with teams, team one versus team two, with team one having two players, team two having other two players. And you have a number of kills for every player. So that is something that is that you write inside the player state. Okay, so what is a player controller? A player controller is a place in which, so player controller, let's, we can, to give an analogy, player controller could be a physical player who is controlling the input and the input are getting delegated to your gameplay. And lastly, we have your resources, your hard. Uh, in Unity, you have UI via your canvas and all. Over Unreal Engine, you have UI using UMG widgets. I'll come to this slide again when I discuss more about multiplayer. Any questions till now? A quick question or anything? Are you guys following? Awesome. Right. So what is a game loop? Uh, you guys might have used update inside the Unity game engine. Right, so that's nothing but a game loop. Game loop is a place wherein you render a frame and you get a place that how much time the, the graphic card take to render that frame, right? So Unreal Engine provides stick every frame uh, with a delta time to all the objects derived from actors, okay? So this is a world, let's say this is a world. You have actor one, actor two to actor n. All of them will have tick available with them. It's your call whether to switch it on or switch it off. Along with that, this is something that is different from uh, Unity. Along with that, you can attach a component at runtime. Okay, it could be something related to mono behavior, what mono behavior also does. Uh, let's say I have two kind of controls inside my game, a swipe control and a tap control, which I am managing it through settings. Okay, so what I can do is, if user has selected a swipe control, I don't need to add a tap control, right? So I can create an actor component of swipe control and attach it to one of the actor. So swipe uh, input component is enabled, right? So this is something that they have built on top of it inside the gameplay framework. And as I discussed, world timer manager allowed us to, you know, gen, uh, run the procedures after some delays. Right, uh, how many? of you guys use design patterns over here while writing code. Awesome. How many of you guys have used adapter design pattern? Right. Uh, right. So you're coding in C++. Does C++ have interfaces? C++ have interfaces, right? Uh, how do we do it? Anyone? Uh, someone mentioned pure virtual, virtual function. Yeah, so that's how you do it. Right. Uh, so whenever you're writing your gameplay, right, so in the past games that we have built, right, we, what we used to do is we, whenever we used to architect, we used to make sure that our gameplay components, our UI components, and our input components, all of them are acting as a module, right? They are not tightly bound to each other, right? and the references get resolved at runtime. Okay, so Unreal, Unreal has a, a insights using C++, they have provided a Unreal interfaces by which you can do a similar kind of thing, by which you can design your classes, your, you can architect your classes without tight bounding. Uh, anyone, uh, anyone who has used singletons? Many, right? Right, so have you used singleton using managers? For managers? Right, 
so when you create a singleton right when you create a singleton is it going to exist for the entire gameplay whenever it is required right and whenever it is required you have to go and delete that object right so you have to write something on top of it so unreal engine came up with this singleton system called as subsystem in unreal 4.25 i think uh, so even we used to write a lot of singleton but we just explored how to write a single is there anything that unreal engine is providing us out of the box because we write game managers we write economy managers we write a lot of managers inside our game right subsystem allowed us to manage the life cycle around the gameplay let's say a manager is only required for a single scene or a map so that will exist only for that scene that's it okay or you might have used audio managers also right so when you are creating any audio managers what happens is that gets spilled over your uh, scene files right so you don't need to do that audio might some audios might not be required for one of the map or the scene right so you can manage the game manage the life cycle of the singletons also so we leverage tech art tools you know to build our gameplay modules okay uh so one of the tool that we have built is scalable uh, scalable tool that we have built is character loader which can be used across multiple games right to explain you this in more detail you can see three characters right uh so all of them are rigged characters and skinned okay and you the characters are divided into parts lower body is separate the upper body is separate your arm is separate and your head is separate right and what we do is to bring a characters inside a game in the production stage we create we build those characters at run time and unreal engine has a tool called as modular character or i would say a set of libraries via which you can merge those characters at run time so that you can save the doc files right so this this modular character tool helped us to you know save a lot of draw call and scale our characters across multiple games along with that uh how many game designers over here right it's always good that a programmer provides you know uh, a tool for those game designers to put in values instead of using jsons right you guys might have used a lot of json files right so you are developing something you are writing a formula on a csv right you are developing formula in excel as csv right and then you are telling your programmer this is the csv the programmer has to enter a lot of values and convert that into a json instead of that unreal engine has things like data table data assets structs which allows you to build a lot of tools for your uh, game designers right so this is something that is our forte okay uh building sports games and we'll get into some complexities of physics right to name a few sports game let's name a few sports games like uh football cricket basketball eight ball pool all of them have one thing in common that is the ball mechanics i'm not saying physics right because physics is a very vast thing let's call it a mechanics right all of them have one thing in common so what you do is you write a generic physics for the ball you use them across multiple games that is how you scale it right today you are working on a tennis game tomorrow you can make a pool game or a bowling game things remain same you add forces velocity torque spin etc so this this is the uh, tennis game that we had and you, as you can see the this uh, 3d crowd that is rendered on philip chatrier stadium which is a center court of french open uh, so this is a vr stand alone vr game that we had we had built uh, as you can see the ball is coming on to the racket right will you be completely dependent on your engine to resolve physics right you have to write something on top of it right because that's how you'll be able to distinguish okay this is a tennis game this is a cricket game or this is a football game right so what do you do 
you use your 11, 12th, 6th and maths, resolve the contact forces and come up with a displacement value per frame. That's the fundamental thing that you do inside any sports game on a ball physics. And then interpolate between requirement and playability. What do I mean by that? You might come up saying that, okay, I have written a perfect physics. I've used all the rules or all the formulas that were there inside my game and I've made a perfect physics. But is it playable? Okay, so our experience is we also wrote a perfect physics, but when you give a racket to a user for the first time, it becomes very unplayable. So you have to make sure that you, you put in knobs inside uh, your code so that you can fine tune it and interpolate them with the requirement and playability so that a new user can easily come on your game and play it easily. And then you can scale it to difficulty. So that was about resolvers. Uh, there's one more thing I would like to share. Uh, how many of you guys have played 8-ball pool over here? Right. So it's a multiplayer game, right? And how does it work? Like, uh, how does the data transfer happens? How does it work? Anyone, anyone wants to give a thought on that? Okay. So I have, a, I have a mobile device that's iPhone. You have a mobile device that is Android, right? Both of them are built using different architecture. Both of them are going to get different frames per second, right? So is it possible to maintain the same state? How? OK, so we don't have any server over here. One of them is a server. Fixed update, right? So fixed update in Unity? OK. Great. Awesome. So what you do in Unity via fixed update is sub-stepping in Unreal Engine. Though it is not a completely same as fixed update, what you can do is rather if you want, you can write your own accumulators. As I mentioned, we wanted a flexibility via which we can modify the game engine. So what we did is we wrote our own accumulator, right? We create, we made this, we, uh, you know, wrote the sub-steps. Right, so what do I mean by sub-stepping? Uh, if, if I want to give an example, right, let's say I'm rendering a frame at 10 seconds on one device, okay, and on other device, I'm rendering a frame on in five seconds, okay? So this concept is similar to what is fixed update in Unity. So I'm going to define a sub-step of two seconds, which is 0 0.002 in case of Unity. I'm going to define a sub-step of two seconds, okay? So in case of device one, wherein a frame is getting rendered in 10 seconds, I need to run a step of physics of phi, correct? But in case of device two, in case of device two for the first frame, what is gonna happen is I'm going to run it for two steps, I'm going to keep that one second step and accumulate it to the next frame. So my next frame is going to have three steps to execute. Right, so that is the fundamental concept of fixed update. So, so we had a flexibility in which we could write our own accumulators inside Unreal Engine. So that was about a little about physics. Okay. So you get a multiplayer out of the box using gameplay framework. Let's go to the uh, Venn diagram again. Right, as someone mentioned over here that I'm going to manage it through server. Okay, a game like 8-Ball Pool, I'm going to manage it through server. So the as I mentioned, the gameplay framework is very critical in our case. Uh, and we took around a lot of refactoring of a code, but this Venn diagram helped us a lot. Uh, so what you do is the game mode is always running on a server, which is an authoritative class. Okay, it is, so given analogy, it is in constant sync with both the clients via player controllers. Okay, so client one is going to have player controller one, but your game server has player controller one also and player controller two also. Okay, so player controller is, player controller is spawned at the server side also and player controller is spawned at the client side also. 
right? So what you do is you give an input via player controller at the client side. You have a constant net connection from your player controller client to a player controller server. You can pass it as via an RPC or you can replicate a variable. Okay, so that things are already provided by Unreal Engine out of the box. So you write your game mode, it is going to work for your single player game and it is also going to work for your multiplayer game. Okay, so that's the concept of uh, game mode. Along with that, we were easily able to create a, a headless server. It was just a build away and it also provides us a Linux build which can be containerized and deployed on Kubernetes. Yeah, so that's how we got multiplayer out of the box and it works in a client server architecture and it has ability to sync your game state, player state. It also has ability to uh, send RPCs and along with that, let's say I don't have a mobile device right now. I don't want to deploy my game on Android device every time. Okay, but still I want to test my game, multiplayer game. So the editor itself has a very good feature in which I can simulate it for multiple clients. So you run it, it will, spawn, it will spawn multiple clients and you can control them using your switching the tabs and you can also manage the pings, okay? They have an ability by which you can manage ping for your server, okay, your latency for your server or one of the clients or all the clients, right? So multiplayer were very easy for us, right? Lastly, opportunities in Unreal Engine in India and world. Uh, so why I said AAA game is current mobile devices, right? They are able to render what consoles used to do back five years back. Okay, so that is what current mobile devices are doing and Unreal Engine has a, uh, you know, it, it supports multiple platform. It's just one build away to say, okay, build Android build iOS, that's it. Okay, you don't have to go to Xcode, you don't have to go to Android Studio or anyone. You have your APK right there, you have your even iOS build right there. Okay. So most of the top games on mobiles and PCs are built using Unreal Engine and many passionate game developers, I would say even C++ programmers who are out there and want to switch to gaming, uh, this is a very good switch that you can get via Unreal Engine. And we see a great potential as we build our own AAA mobile game. Uh, one of the biggest and ambitious game to come out of India. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we are hiring across all levels, be it tech, art, design, product. And please feel free to email me. That's my email address and that's the website. Even you can check out our website to have early beta access for our game. Awesome. Questions? Okay, so what what we have, the so the maximum players that we support is, what Unreal says is about 50 to 100. Okay, but if you want, it's up to you, okay, the way you are going to containerize and build it on your uh, systems. Yeah, hi, so, uh, my question is, uh, I have seen like in the recent times, a lot of studios who used to work on Unity are also moving into Unreal. But in India, like uh, Unreal as an engine is uh, quite resource demanding and uh, it requires uh, uh, like uh, at least a moderately good enough uh, PC to run. So what are your views on uh, uh, like it's a... Uh, like uh, popularity increasing in India because uh, India is still a developing country and uh, a lot of uh, smaller studios and uh, smaller indie developers can't afford a really good uh, computer system. Yeah, 
uh, to answer that, even when we switched from Unity to Unreal Engine, right? Uh, what we got to know, okay, so we need a graphics processor, okay, which is about a minimum GTX 1060, okay? And second is we need an Intel processor uh, if i5 and greater, if required. But what I would say is what we have observed over the past, it's just a say outside the market, okay, that it needs a powerful device and all. But when it comes to your editor, right, it, also, it is also with respect to what kind of games you are making. Let's say if you are making a casual game, right, and your editor is sufficient enough to run on a 8GB device, okay, with, as I mentioned, the minimum graphic card, which is 1060 GTX, right, and, uh, and an Intel processor of uh, i5, which is, I think, a lot of people nowadays have a laptop with that configuration. Okay, so if it's, it depends on what kind of game you're making, actually. And even in case of Unity also, that's the same, right? What kind of game that you're making. If you're making a casual game, it is not going to overheat. If you're making a very powerful game, it is going to overheat. So overheating is the problem. 